everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Sarah and I am a conservation biologist here at the Living Desert. And in a few minutes you're going to meet Alex and she's also a biologist here at the Living Desert. And I'm here with my friend Mojave and you guys participated in our Mojave Maxine Emergence Contest. So thank you so much for participating and learning what you can about desert tortoises, these native reptiles found here in the Mojave Desert of California. And we're going to take a few minutes and just chat about tortoises. Unfortunately, you can't come see us and see this guy in person, but I wanted you to be able to get up close and personal, have a chance to visit with him. And the first thing that we're going to discuss is how you can tell you're actually looking at a reptile. Desert tortoises, like Mojave here, are a reptile, and there's basically three ways that you can tell an animal is a reptile. Now, if you saw just a second ago as we zoomed in, Mojave has some really dry, scaly skin. It looks like he could go through a couple bottles of lotion, um, you know, and get that skin nice and smooth. But he actually wants that nice, dry, scaly skin because that's an adaptation that protects him out in his dry, arid environment. The scales on that skin are made of keratin, the same thing that your fingernails are made of, and keratin is waterproof. So reptiles are covered in a nice coating of waterproof scales. It'd be like if your whole body was covered in fingernails. You could go out to recess or outside and not have to worry so much about making sure your water bottle's with you the whole time because you wouldn't sweat and lose so much water that way. So dry scaly skin is the first way to tell an animal is a reptile. The second way to know if an animal is a reptile is to know whether they lay eggs. And all reptiles, with the exception of a few snakes, lay eggs on land. They don't lay those eggs in the water, they're gonna lay them on land. When tortoises hatch out of their eggs, desert tortoises anyway, their eggs are about the size of a ping pong ball and they're pretty tiny. So Mojave here has already grown quite a bit from his hatchling size when he first emerged out of his egg. And he's about three or four years old. But if you imagine him the size of a ping pong ball when he first started life, he would look exactly like his mom and dad, just a little miniature version. So those three rules, dry scaly skin number one, number two, all reptiles lay eggs on land. And the third way to tell if an animal is a reptile is to know how their body works. All reptiles are cold-blooded. Now, I don't necessarily like to use the term cold-blooded because it's a little bit confusing. You think, okay, their blood's cold all the time. It's not actually the case. All the cold-blooded means is that their body temperature is dictated or um, determined by their outside surroundings. So right now we're sitting outside and it's a nice 85 degrees here today in the desert. And so our body temperature, or Mojave's anyway, is right around there. Now if we got up and I went into a freezer, my body temperature would stay the same. My body's burning a lot of energy and working hard to maintain that same temperature. But Mojave, being cold blooded, his body temperature is going to drop to that of his surroundings. In order to stay warm, he would need to go lay in the sun and warm up. If he needs to cool down, remember he doesn't sweat, he's got those scales all over his skin, he's going to go into a burrow or a mud puddle in order to cool his body down. Cold-blooded animals use behaviors in order to manage their body temperature, whereas warm-blooded animals use a lot of energy. So those are the three ways to tell if an animal is a reptile. Number one, they have dry scaly skin. Number two, they lay eggs on land. And number three, they are cold-blooded. Okay, so like we said in the beginning, the desert tortoise is a native species. That means that they live here and they always have lived here. Um, they evolved in this ecosystem and they belong here. The desert tortoise lives in the Mojave and the Sonoran Desert. And while they're living in the desert, um, they eat a plant-based diet. So um, things like flowers or cactus pads. This means that the desert tortoise is a called a, a herbivore, meaning that they only eat plants. So no, they don't eat other animals or bugs or things like that. So you can see Frank here munching on some flowers. He really loves those. He actually has a very sharp um, mouth, kind of like a beak um, that can chomp on things really hard, chomp through thick cactus, um, and he chews pretty quickly. And also, while tortoises are living in the, their desert environment, they spend most of their life, up to 95% of their whole life, underground in burrows that they have dug for themselves. And the reason that they spend 
time underground in their burrows is to help um, maintain their body temperature. Like Sarah said, they're cold blooded, so the temperature of their body will change based on the temperature around them. So when it's very, very hot in the summer, the desert tortoise will go into its burrow underground to help stay cool. And then when it's colder in the winter, the tortoise stays underground in its burrow to help stay warm. And of course, the tortoise finds protection in its burrow from different predators that are trying to eat it. It's a very safe place. And not only does the desert tortoise find protection in its burrow, but other animals find protection there too. Um, so things like uh, mice or rabbits, uh, snakes, lizards, all sorts of other desert wildlife will use this big desert tortoise burrow to go underground as well um, and find safety from other predators trying to eat them. So what this means is that the desert tortoise and the burrows that it digs serve a very great purpose in the desert ecosystems. So just think without the tortoise to dig those burrows, where would the other wildlife be able to find safety? So speaking of burrows, another really important function of the tortoise burrow is a place for that tortoise to sleep through the winter and actually through the summer. Now you guys all participated in our Mojave Maxine Emergence Contest and what you probably learned about was brumation. And brumation is the winter sleep of a desert tortoise and many other reptiles. And desert tortoises need to go into brumation because the temperatures drop too cold for them to keep their bodies warm enough. So they go into a state of sleep and that helps them survive through those cold winter temperatures in the, during the winter, of course. Um, also, they have a type of sleep that they do in the summer, which is called estivation. And estivation is basically a summer hibernation state where they'll sleep through a lot of the summer when it's way too hot for them to be active. But the important part to remember is that the burrow provides protection both in the summer and the winter to help these guys regulate that body temperature and stay at a nice, decent temperature so that everything inside keeps working. So obviously there are so many cool things about the desert tortoise so many reasons to love them and so many reasons to help protect them. There are many threats facing the desert tortoise and it helps to know about these threats so we know exactly what to do to help protect the species in its wild habitat. So one major threat, threat, one major threat of the desert tortoise is loss of its, of its own habitat. So as our uh, human settlements or developments continue to expand and grow bigger and bigger, uh, they build right on top of the desert tortoises' habitat. So when we put in new parking lots or new neighborhoods or new soccer fields, the desert tortoise typically loses that habitat. So there's less and less space to live. Now, of course, there's ways for us to share our habitat. We just have to be careful about the way that we build our communities to make sure that we leave space for de desert wildlife and all wildlife. And sometimes the habitat is lost just by being uh, degraded or harmed or changed in some way. So, for example, when we see vehicles driving off road uh, into the desert habitat, they can really tear it up. They can tear up plants. Uh, tear up really fragile soils, sometimes drive right over tortoises or tortoise burrows. Uh, so this is another way that their habitat can be destroyed. And they have less place where they can live, find food, find water, and find other tortoises to make their family. So that's one threat, habitat loss. A second major threat facing the desert tortoise is climate change. So we know that our climate is changing as long as we're not able to take really great action to solve that problem. And what this means for us in Southern California and for the desert tortoise is that it will begin to be warmer, uh, drier, less water. This means less plants growing, uh, less food for the desert tortoise, less water for the desert tortoise. And it's already really hard to survive out here in the harsh climate of the desert. Um, so these extra pressures can really make a huge difference. So what we can all do to help protect the desert tortoise is to stand up for climate action and make sure that we do something big or small uh, to make sure that we have a more stable climate moving forward. 
And sometimes that can be really simple, just telling your friends or your family that climate action is important and that we have to stand together to do something. Now the third threat facing the desert tortoise, the third major threat, is uh, predation from the common raven. So the common raven, those big black birds that you see flying around, they look kind of like crows, they sound just like crows, but they're a little bit bigger and they're a different species. So the raven has learned to peck through the soft shell of baby tortoises. It takes a tortoise's shell about five years to become hard. So during that time, they're very vulnerable. Um, it's very easy for a raven to come and peck right through that shell. Now, this is a normal behavior to see a raven pecking through a tortoise shell. But what's not normal is that our raven population here in the California desert is almost 20 times larger than it was just 50 years ago. That means that we have a lot of ravens and they're eating a lot of baby desert tortoises. The reason that we have so many ravens is because we humans have been most of the time accidentally but still providing the ravens with extra resources that they wouldn't have normally found in the desert. And when we provide them extra resources like water from our sprinklers um, or food from our open trash cans, their population can continue to grow and grow and grow in a way that's very unnatural. So now we have so many ravens. So you heard me say that those ravens are eating food from our open trash cans. And this is one huge way that you can help protect the tortoise is to cover your trash at home. Make sure that lid is shut really tight. That way we have less food available for ravens, fewer ravens, and more baby desert tortoises that can survive to adulthood. So it takes five years for that baby shell to harden, but it takes about 15 years for a, a, a tortoise to become really an adult so that they can start to mate with other tortoises and actually have babies. So we need to make sure that our babies can grow up to have more babies and we can have more desert tortoises in our desert home. All right, so it's time for fun facts to share with friends or fun facts about Frank <laughs> and all desert tortoises. So Frank here, we don't really know Frank's age because we weren't there when he hatched out of a shell. But um, a fun fact about tortoises is that they have a really long lifespan. In fact, most desert tortoises will live an average of 50 to up to 80 years old. And when they're being taken care of by humans, they have free shelter, free food. They can sometimes reach up to 100, which is pretty amazing. Now, another fun fact about tortoises is that they don't drink with their mouth like you and I do. They actually drink using their nose or what we call their nares. Those are their nostrils. And the reason that they do that is that tortoises don't have soft lips that they can pooch out and suck from a puddle. So when they want to be able to get the water, they put that flat part of their face down, which is their nose, and they will sometimes submerge their entire head underwater, which can be a little freaky. It looks like they're drowning, but actually they're sucking water up through their nose to get a nice big drink. And speaking of drinks, my third fun fact that desert tortoises can do is not only will they drink from mud puddles, but they can actually drink their own pee. Now I know that sounds gross and trust me, they don't pee it out and then drink it up because indeed that would be very gross. But they have a special mechanism inside their body that allows them to recycle their bladder water. So they actually carry a full bladder around on purpose, unlike what we do. They want that canteen of water in their body so that they can resorb water out of there and send it to the organs in their body that need water. Because after all, in the desert, you don't know when the next time you're gonna see water. So it's good to always have some with you. So those are our fun facts to share with friends. And what do we have left, Alex? Yeah, I think that's all we have for today. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to learn about the desert tortoise and the different ways that you can help protect this species in the wild. We hope that you've come away from this visit as a new tortoise expert ready to share all this new knowledge with your friends and family and get them on board to protect this wonderful species as well. Most definitely. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send us an email and we'll see you hopefully at the zoo. Bye. Bye.